I'm Jacqueline Clater, fourth grade teacher at Knuckles Farm. This is my student teacher, Nizama Dervisovic, and this is our fourth grade class here at Knuckles Farm. All right, so fourth grade. Today, you are part of the Knuckles Farm Marine Animal Stranding Center, and part of that entails going out on calls, looking at animals on the beach, finding uh, ways to help our community and help our Chesapeake Bay. This morning you read a little bit of an article about mass strandings on shores. Does anyone want to share some information that they learned about mammal strandings? Caroline? Um, the six sperm whales have been stranded in the UK beaches uh, like that year or lately. Okay. Anyone want to add on to that or share something that you learned from reading this article about mammal strandings? Ryan? That um, metal and lots of stuff is being found in their bodies. Oh, interesting. Okay, great. Yes? About 1,800 years ago, the king made a law that whales and porpoises were royal fish in anything that either a fisherman caught or was found on shore belonged to him. That's really interesting. Great. All right, I'll take a couple more uh, pieces of information that you learned to get an idea of some background information on animal strandings. Yes, Shitty? Small parts of the organs will be tested for disease and poison. Great. And actually, we're going to do a little bit of that today. We're going to see um, if we can find some animals on the shore and see what might have happened to them as well. Ben? At least 29 whales have been found on the coast of three countries in the world. Right, and there are a lot of animal strandings, even right here off the coast of Virginia Beach, um, or in North Carolina, if you go vacation in the Outer Banks or North Carolina, anywhere on the shore, there can be animal strandings, not just in the UK. Um, anyone have any questions after reading this article? Caroline? Um, I wonder what the average age is for them. Okay, good. All right, yes? Oh, how come the whales get lost if they if they like they swim around that area and you know like <coughs> is a great question. How do they get lost when they are supposed to be navigators of the water, right? How is it that they can get lost on the shore? Okay, one more question. Yes, Logan. Um, my question is, why don't they use their echolocation to get around? Absolutely, that's a great adaptation that some animals have, and how come they didn't use that to get around? Great idea, great piggyback off of Dylan's question. All right, so as an animal stranding center today, you all are going to be working in teams um, to help solve some of these problems as marine biologists and stranding members. So, um, what I'd like for you to do is take a look at your stranding report located on your desk on top of the clipboard. And that is some specific information uh, that we're going to be collecting if we get a call today. So things like, uh, what's today's date? What time did we get out there? What is the weather like today? Does everyone see where it says uh, the common name of the animal, the genus and the species, the city and state in the box up at the top? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Give me a thumbs up if you see exactly what I'm talking about right now. All right, awesome. So we're going to be taking down some notes today. Now I want you to point to where it says external conditions. If we happen to find these marine animals on the beach, we're going to have to be checking off some specific observations and take some data about our animals. So we're going to have to look and see, is our animal emaciated? Uh, we're going to have to check for line and netting marks on different parts of the animal. And so right there next to the external conditions checklist, is an actual model of a dolphin with different um, uh, labels pointing to parts of the dolphin to help you. Flip it over real quick to the back side. On the back, you're going to be taking measurements. <coughs> so everything is going to be taken in metric length. And give me a thumbs up if you are one of the expert measurers for your table today. Awesome. So you're going to be helping, and team, the rest of you are going to be helping to measure your dolphin as well. Do I have any questions? No questions so far? All right, go ahead and flip it back over. All right, 
fourth grade. So, like I was saying before, when you are part of a marine stranding team, you are expected to not only help the marine animals that come into the stranding center, but also take calls uh, should an observer come around and uh, reach out and say that they find something on the beach. So Naima, you're going to take a call today. So come on over to our stranding report. Thank you for calling the Marine Animal Stranding Center. What can I help you with? Yeah, hey, um, I'm hoping you can help me. Um, I'm calling from Virginia Beach. My wife and I were taking a, a walk along the beach early this morning. And we got close to our hotel and noticed something really large at the edge of the shore. And we thought it might be some chairs and trash that were left behind, but we got closer and knew it wasn't that. We, I think we have a big situation here. Okay. I need to get some information from you so that I can fill in the stranding team about the animal you have. You're writing down the information. What is your name? Uh, my name is Ernie. I'm calling from mile post 28. It's close to the surf shop here in Virginia Beach. What type of animal have you found? Uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure it's Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. Uh, yeah, there are five. No, wait a minute. I think there might be six of them. It's kind of a bad situation. Say about seven twenty this morning. What are the weather conditions? Okay, is it dead or alive? Um, I, 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 I thought a couple of them might be alive, but I haven't seen any movement from any of them, and it's been a while, so I'm afraid. I'm afraid, like. It's uh, 804, it's 550 Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about the animal? Um, some of the dolphins, they look like they had, they had some of look like they had netting attached to them. Okay. Uh, I don't see any movement, and, um, um, and we're trying to keep folks away from it as best we can. But it just looks like there's some trash around them. Um, some of them are right around like the nose kind of area and come kind of wrapped around the body itself. Okay. Thank you for calling the Marine Animal Stranding Center. Uh, thank you so much for helping. Thanks for getting out some help. All right, stranding team. Go ahead and take a look at your dolphin. If there's netting on your dolphin, you can, un you can free them from the netting. You can take it off of them. Make sure you're observing scratch marks, helping each other measure, and looking at all parts of your dolphin to see what could be wrong.
right, make sure you have your dolphin. Make sure you have all of your materials. Okay, here. If you hold each corner, there you go. All right, you guys got him? All right, stay right there. We're going to go in a line. So team one, um, Noah, or, oh, sorry, Obi, you got everything? All right, team one, we're going to go in order. So team one, dolphin one, and then dolphin two behind them. Dolphin three. Dolphin four, Henry, Dolphin five, y'all are going to come next, and then six. Put your dolphin on the table, come find your table number, and don't touch anything just yet, okay? All right, so now, using your gloves, you are going to perform a necropsy on your dolphin, and we're going to look at different contents that we found with the internal conditions of your dolphin. So the first thing that we are going to take a look at, if you look at the last page of your stranding report, is the blubber thickness. Everyone hold up your blubber sample. Your team is going to want to measure your blubber to see if it's at least one centimeter thick. If it's less than a centimeter thick, your dolphin might have been emaciated, so it would have less blubber, blubber to protect itself. So go ahead with your team and measure your blubber thickness. No, you're just going to measure it inside the bag. No. You're, you don't need to open the bag unless you want to. You're just measuring the width of the bag. It's The thickness of it. So you're going to measure it this way. So is yours at least a centimeter thick, do you think? So no. it did not Was your dolphin pretty it's emaciated? Not, yeah, it's emaciated. One inch. yeah, it's not emaciated. All right, shark bait. Does anyone notice shark bait? Does anyone notice anything inside of the blubber? Does anyone have something else abnormal inside of their blubber? Uh, team six, what do you notice inside of your blubber? Hold it up for everybody to see. There was a lot of green dots. Green dots. So. Your dolphin might have had parasites in its blubber, so you might want to mark down that there were parasites inside of your blubber if you have any sort of markings inside of your blubber. Okay, fourth grade, now you're going to look inside of your dolphin's stomach. So take this back and everyone together, you can open it up if you'd like, you have on gloves. See if there, what, what did your dolphin last eat? Okay, so make sure you take down everything so you've got trash in there. These, these are actually parasites that are found in your dolphin. Oh, wow. It looks like your dolphin hasn't eaten a lot of fish lately. What has your dolphin eaten instead? So if your dolphin's eating shells, where has it been swimming? At the top of the ocean or the bottom of the ocean? Okay, and you've got a lot of sand, and that's pretty much it. That isn't good for dolphins. You need to go back up You might want to mark that down on your data report that that's a little alarming. Once you have finished documenting the contents of the stomach and taken some data on what is inside of your dolphin's stomach, you may cut your dolphin's tooth in half with the plastic tool that I've given you. This is your dolphin's tooth. Eyes up here for a second. When you cut it in half, there are rings inside of it. That will give you the estimated age of your dolphin. So you can have a volunteer from your team cut it in half. Okay, you can cut it in half. It has rings in it. It looks like it only has like rings. Oh, so yeah, it looks like rings. Dolphin gets two years old. How many rings do you want? Yeah, two rings. Count them. Oh, three, four. Oh, no, two. two. Yeah, there's two. So your dolphin's estimated age is what? Can, like, dicing and, like, cooking. Good okay, job. Okay, so that's two. One pink and one pink. Okay. okay. Yeah. So about how many, how many years old is your dolphin? So it is, it is two years. Two. Okay. Are you 
share. So you're going to count all of them in the white. One, two, three, four, five. So maybe about five or six, I would say. All right, let's head back to the Stranding Center. We are going to have a science discourse uh, where you all can talk to each other. Uh, and I have put some of the strands that we've been practicing up on the board. Table six, if you'd like to come around and get closer so that we're in a little bit of a circle, take your chairs and come over here. So as we're talking about what you saw today, what stuck out to you today, what do you think might have happened? Or how it feels to be a stranding team member? Um, make sure that you're taking a look at some of the different discourse strands that we've practiced uh, in the classroom so far. So just like our normal discourses, uh, you don't necessarily have to raise your hand. Um, so I'm just going to let you all start talking and then um, we'll see where we go from there. What is one thing that you all noticed or observed today? There were lots of bruises around ours, um, on its body and like on its limbs. So what's interesting about that is ours had no um, bruising, but they did have some parasites on the outside and a lot of, in their lungs. Did it have any netting? Uh, no, it didn't have any netting. So no, ours, ours is something that had netting around the entire body. Mm -hmm. right. I think that they might have been trying to catch ours first because we found a fishing hook and line in our dolphin's stomach, and it was the only one that was netted. So maybe it got onto the beach, or like, maybe it was swimming with a pod, and when they tried to catch one, the rest of the pod went after it and got stranded too. What do you mean by that? Like, like I think what she's trying to say is, like, one dolphin was, like, it's like one dolphin needed help, and then some other dolphins tried and came to. Yeah, like pods, they swim pods, so, like, they wanted to protect their family, because, I mean, even humans want to protect their family. And also, like, they did that because, well, I know they're trying to protect the dolphins, like everyone else said, because dolphins are actually dangerous in packs. Yeah. So it's interesting that you all have different ideas of what could have possibly happened to your dolphin. And so one of our nature of science tenets is that science demands <coughs> evidence. So in order for us to really find out what happens to our dolphins and what happened to the dolphins and their cause of their death, um, you all are going to do some more research throughout the next couple of weeks. And you're going to be looking at different diseases that occur in dolphins. You're going to be looking at different ways that pollution and bacteria in the water can affect dolphins. Um, and then you're going to use the data that you collected today to maybe come to some different conclusions about exactly what happened today uh, when you went out onto the streaming team. Thank you all so much. You did a fantastic job today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Knuckles Farm Dolphin Stranding Simulation today. Go